Hello, friends. Welcome to Saga Thursday, the show all about the skirmish miniatures game from Studio Tomahawk. I'm your host, Raj, as always, joined once again by Monty. How's it going, bud? Excellent, Raj. How about yourself? Oh, I'm doing pretty darn good here. We've got a nice show lined up for everybody today, and the main topic is kind of picking up where we left off. Um, was it last time or two two months ago, getting started in Saga? There's yep. too much going on in my life to remember that stuff. But it's uh, how to find players and to grow a Saga community in your area. So um, that'll be the, the main topic for today. But we are going to talk about some games. And then I have like, I've been telling you, I got like eight little mini topic discussion points here to <laughs> go over with you and uh let's jump in with, with those right now so all right uh what we are gonna start with here Monty, is i showed you a picture of the raj rulers i'm calling those yeah yes. the uh custom uh saga sticks I, i've made for myself so these are kind of a personal project for me i wanted some nice colorful sticks made up for myself um you know i've seen you know the laser cut acrylics and wood stuff done out there and uh you know i want to get some full color stuff done up and i have extras of these for sale and uh, i got some tokens as well uh, fatigue tokens, uh, determination, we obey tokens. Um, so I uh, put together a couple sets here. So um, if you're tired of your opponent, uh, if you guys are using the same sticks, and uh, <laughs> dude, dude, where's my short? I think you got my short, man. Um, that happens around here. So, um, you know, after the event, you'll know for sure these are yours. So, um, the deal is they're going to be 17 bucks for a set, uh, $3 domestic shipping. If you're out of the States, uh, you know, give me your address. You know, we can figure out exactly what it would be. Um, and then if you are a member of the Patreon, whatever your monthly subscription level is, is what you'll get off the shipping cost on it. So if nice. you're a warrior... Or higher, basically, it's free in the U.S. Free shipping, um, and if you're at the higher levels and you're outside of the states, um, it'll take a good chunk off or make it free. And for the couple, so there's three of them now, guys. At the warlord level, you're gonna get a just a free set. I'm gonna give it to you at. I know two of them will be at Adepticon, and I'll, I'll just mail the third out to that fellow. So thanks for those guys. Um, I am offering a uh, uh, the Hearthguard Pro set here, Monty, which is the, the main four and an extra large and medium. You, okay. you know, if you're a Saga Pro, you need those extra sticks for, to do your pre-measuring, right? <laughs> yes. um, so if you want that set, it's 27 another 10 bucks to get the extra two sticks. And uh, it was a fun little little project to to do. And you know, basically, I just made the sticks that I wanted. But you know, I'm hope, thinking other people might want them. And I got a yeah. few extras. So, dude, I saw the pictures. They're excellent. Yeah. Um, so they're pretty cool. They're clear acrylic on one side, and then so one side's kind of like a matte print, and then the other side would be like a gloss from the clear acrylic. And then they do have the little two inch increments marked out on the short, medium and larges. So like, I know you're getting close to just root replicating rulers, actual rulers at that point. But, um, you know, uh, yeah, you know, they're still, still useful, still handy in the game of saga. So, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully they catch people's eye. And, uh, this is, this is going to be a one time thing here. So, um, once I'm out of these, you know, they're, they're gone. Um, I might do another run at some other point, but uh, this is your one chance. So I'll have info below. And then similarly, I'll have the token sets. Um, I'll have the specific counts down below, but I think 20 bucks or no, 17 for the uh, 
just a basic token set, which is 18 fatigues, one determination, one we obey. And then I've got the Age of Magic set, which is five determinations, two we obeys, and then can't remember exactly how many more fatigues. But uh, if you run an Age of Magic, you're going to need all those. Uh, yes, you will. Ones. Uh, so, and I think 27 for that. So I'll have the details posted somewhere below. But uh, yeah, hopefully folks are interested in that. And uh, yeah, contact me. We'll. We'll make a deal. Uh, nice. Nice touch, Raj. Right. Let's move on to Saga News. Monty? Yes? Studio Tomahawk posted some photos yes, on their, yes. their Facebook. Did you see these? <laughs> I did. I did. Uh, caused quite a ruckus, a lot of excitement. Yeah, so we saw elephants, chariots, more... Uh, Phalangites, the Sarissas, yep. were out in force. And uh, yeah, so look, and I think there even may have been a post like, come out to this convention or whatever. You know, we might even have Alexander stuff. I, I think, I think it might have been explicit with that in French. Um, I don't know if I'm just misremembering that or not. But um, so yeah, it looks like Age of Alexander could be the next. The yes. next book out, so yes, that's uh, exciting stuff. You can, if you want to see the pics, I know they're up on the Saga Thursday Discord as well. Yep. If you don't want to go to the Studio Tomahawk website, I think in Discord there were a few players who were breaking down the screenshots, the little bit of the board oh, they could see. Yeah, there's a they were, right, and they were they were translating French. So we have some very serious Saga yeah, players. Yeah, there was a lot of speculation going on yep. so yep. um yeah that, that's good to see and exciting we got a little news tidbit so uh yes. that's it for now <laughs> uh monty uh thimble winner wrapped up since last time i yep. uh, made a little video about that with some that was good shots of the really table enjoyed it Raj. yeah yeah uh talk about the winner at, um you know, live at the event, so that's something I've been wanting to do for a while, and kind of, yeah, put the put the twig in my mouth and bit down and uh, figured it all out. And hopefully, um, I'm, I'm going to bring it all to Adepticon. So, um, wow. hopefully, we can. There's a nice quiet corner somewhere we can set up and talk with people live at the event. Um, that should should be fun. The winner was Andrew. And he's the guy I talked to, so highly recommend that video. And since then, I've kind of done a partial announcement for All Father's Day. Yep. Um, just to some locals, but yeah, June eighteenth, twenty twenty two. And what uh, what are we doing here, Monty? What age? I'm, age? What age are we doing? It's going to be Age of Magic. Yes. Um, so. This last one, we just did everything. Um, we kind of don't want to do that any every time. You know, there's nothing wrong with that, but sure, uh, we we might do that again some other time with letting everything rip. But we're going back to Age of Magic and uh, really looking looking forward to it. Are you going to be there, bud? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I even I even uh, did some painting for that event well in advance, but but like just simply having the event. On my calendar, got me excited about painting something I've had in the queue for a very long. Yeah, time. I saw that uh, some flying creatures for right. Underworld. Per, right. uh, or we had a long discussion <laughs> last time about yep. uh, the creatures versus the Hearth Guard uh, debate. So I'm going to be playing in this one. I have my uh, tournament companion Zach. We're kind of running these together and. Um, so he he'll do the TO duties that day and then so I'm currently uh planning for Masters of the Under Earth. Uh, I'm going to give him a shot and see what uh we're up to. I'm kind of figuring out lists and stuff right now. Not a lot to report at this time, but I've started ordering the models. Uh, I've got some stuff in mind and yeah, a couple ideas. I'm kind of in the same boat as you whether you know, should I go hearth guard or creatures? Got pros and cons to each. 
Um, but I don't know. Something about the three pack of creatures slamming in. Um, either the cav or the foot guy, the 15 attack dice, nothing quite hits like that <laughs> in Age of Magic. It's, it's nope. probably the hideous thing out there. Um, it's a hard, hard to resist those guys in my book. Um, but looking forward to it. We are playing in a kick ass pavilion, a uh, la Saga Storm. Yep. And, uh, hopefully it's not a hundred degrees. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> It's fine. Monty, bring your short shorts, bud. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe I'll, I'll bring my swimming suit. A speedo. Stay cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Smuggle some grapes in. Uh, yeah, it should, should be a good time. Looking forward to it. We've got plenty of sign-ups already. And, uh, yeah, if you want to get some Age of Magic on, come on down, people. Uh, we've, I'll have a link to the packet below. I've got this, uh, scenarios laid out. Um, so these were, Zach's running the TO duties, so he requested, uh, two of the scenarios, which were, uh, some, some kind of troll hunt, which I think there was a Saga Storm with a troll hunt. Is that right, mm -hmm. Monty? Yes. So I came up with the troll hunt scenario. Uh, you want to do battle around the campfire. Love that which one. is a good one yep. and then the last one is the one i'm going to talk about right now uh for our little scenario chat can't stay away this is uh big talk Monty, did you look at this one i did i don't have it up in front of me but i did look at it and i liked what i saw okay yeah so this is my variation of tale of challenges and tale of challenges is a is a good scenario. I don't think there's anything wrong with that one. Um, so I did kind of two modifications to it. One was um, just trying to have some kind of terrain, some some different with terrain to get you thinking. So for this one, you can't start the game deployed in terrain. So right. just I like that. Eh, you might shift the, the trees a little bit, or you know. Could, Get to jump on somebody if uh, you're, you're going first, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was one thing. The other thing was the actual challenges. So there is one thing I kind of don't like about this scenario is you got to come up with all the the challenges at the start, and there's like a lot of stress. You know, oh am I gonna? Which one should I do? You know, what if I choose wrong? And then uh, sometimes you can be like, oh, I'll just take this one. And then in turn two, you're like, what the heck? What did I, I can't even like, you know, at the end of turn two, it's like impossible to get that one, you know, once you see. Um, so this is kind of a low risk, uh, casual way to get into it. So basically, um, you don't make the challenges at the start of the game. You make them during the game. At the start of each of your turns, you can make a challenge. And then your opponent has the opportunity to to throw one away. So there is, you know, some strategy to that as well. Yeah. Um, so and with your opponent throwing some out, I think you'll see some different challenges pick then. Because I think I don't know. Do you just? I generally have like two or three that I fall right. back on. Just the generic. Right. I have my safe exactly like you. Two to three, and the ones I pick, like I've I've kind of. I've kind of taken into account that even if, like, you know, for example, I'm going to kill your warlord. Well, what do people do when you pick that one? They hide their warlord away, and the warlord is like a non-factor for almost the whole game. So, like, in a way, it's it's a great one to pick because either I'm going to get him or you're going to hide him. And if you hide him, I'm, I'm still winning. Mm -hmm. So I love the idea of nuking those because my friends and I have played this stuff enough that it'll shake things up. I know what their favorites are. They're going to nuke mine. I'm going to nuke theirs, so or we're going to have to try something different. Yeah, and it adds some play, <clears throat> more playability to the end of the game ones, which are about half of them, which are like, you know, really <laughs> pretty risky to choose those before the game even starts. But some mm -hmm. of those, like, you know, the Warlord one, keep your Warlord alive. You won't choose that at the start because you, you're not generating a Saga die for your Warlord. But, right. But if you... 
if your opponent doesn't throw it out and it's still there at turn five or six, you know, eh, yeah, I'll take that one. Yeah, I'll, I'll yep. take the hit. Um, so you gotta kind of got to be thinking ahead when you're tossing them out too. Um, so that's the the main variation on that one. Uh, so take a look at that one. Should be fun. Did you? You, I know you played a couple games with Scott. Did you play it? You didn't play it, did you? We uh, we played the Book of Battle version just because he's trying to prep for um, Adepticon. So since uh, Adepticon, I think, is going to be using the Book of Battle type stuff, we were keeping it that way. But I love, I love the changes that you've made there. And it's already got me thinking, like, if um, one of the ones, if you're playing a mobile warband, and you want to get three units to the other side, and if they're not paying attention, you could kind of start cheating your units over and then draw it later in the game and like, ah, uh, 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 it's a little late to shoot me up or chase me off. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go get this one. So, yeah, I've already, just as we're talking about it, I'm thinking about it, and I'm going to break that out the next time I play. Okay, yeah. Well, definitely, uh, when you're, well, these scenarios are always... You gotta kind of double check them when you're playing Age of Magic. Uh, you know, if you're doing, right. if you're teleporting and uh, yeah. uh, flying across the board, you know, some of these getting to the <laughs> other guys zones might be a little easier. Uh, so, yeah, it's good, good scenario. Nothing wrong with the Book of Battles mm -hmm. one, but if you want to try something a little different, give this one a shot. It's going to be hosted on the Rodules website in the tourney packet and. Um, Actually, on the Discord server as well. I'll get to that in a little bit. Um, moving on, just a few <laughs> more of these topics. Uh, Monty, did you see that battle report I did? Yes. The video? Oh, you, I like, you like it. That one? I like it a lot. So here is the rub, and, and, you, and you got it all. Like, there's different aspects to doing a live game. And then putting up on YouTube, and like one of them is the length of the game, and you've edited it down to about sixty minutes. I, I think even a little yeah, less, fi about fifty minutes. So, nice. Yeah. And and I just have like this is just an opinion, but I feel like I feel like under an hour is doable. And the ones that go two and a half or three and a half hours, boy, it gets hard to like sit in a chair or have that up and and stay focused. So like you had the time right. You also had the boards clearly shown, and you had the dice rolls, and it just moved very quickly. Very, very nice editing. So enjoyed that one a lot. Awesome. Glad to hear. Uh, do you have any advice for, for Tom with his mutts? You know, so listen, like my, I guess my overall advice would be good job and keep going. Mm -hmm. They are tricky to run, but certainly one of my favorite factions to run, not based on their win-loss record, but just how much fun I have playing them. And they're kind of some some of their asymmetrical plays um, and, and the way light bulbs go off in the middle of the game. And I saw he, he popped the one, the difficult one, where I think he had a rare on the one where you kill his last figure mm -hmm. and then he kicks fatigue out everywhere. And while it didn't win him the game, it was like just being able to crack that one and, and pop it at the right time. That's an important step. And now he's got that in his tool belt. Yeah. It put a fatigue on like every unit in my army, <laughs> except right? for the one unit of Levy off on the side. So, um, yeah, one thing that you mentioned in the comments, which uh, was popping Hegira earlier to... Um, so that one you sacrifice a hearth guard, but you can get up to like three fatigue free activations, right? Yeah, and oh. kind of using that to drill the camels in, like on a double charge like early, no like at all costs, yeah. to right. because the camels with bloodbath can basically wipe out the hearth guard. And, um, you know, so that was kind of in the back of my mind is how am I going to deal with those guys? But so I always told them. You don't use a gyra until the end of the game when you have that two or three man unit of hearth guard that's never going to see combat again. Um, you know, pop it then. But um, so you'll you'll use it early. Yes, I mean it, the trick is like to make sure because camels are a little tricky. They go 
uh, 12 inches in their first move, mm-hmm. and I think it's six after. So what, what he would be looking for is just like, there was a moment, I couldn't quite tell as a spectator, but I was like, ooh, are, is, is Raj's uh, six-pack of horses uh, mounted a uh, guard? Are they within 18? They eight. <laughs> right. If, mm-hmm. if they were, I would have gone right in. I would have killed one of the camels to power up the drive, go in, pair it with bloodbath, and, um, and see if we can trade a four-pack for a six-pack and just blow up that whole unit of Hearthguard. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Good play. I know Tom's probably listening, and we'll chat about it next time. Um, yeah, hopefully I can get some Varangian and guard on foot painted up <laughs> before our next battle. Um, Make that trick a little harder to execute, right? Mm-hmm. So, but then there are other tricks they can do. Yeah. So, um, I do have on the schedule a Vikings versus Anglo Danes battle report. It's going to be kind of like an introductory one to Saga. So there'll probably be a little more explanation of everything throughout. Um, I haven't recorded it yet, but it's it's on the calendar. And um, it probably won't be out till May or June, though, based off uh, the current Patreon level, which is actually, um, thanks to some generous folks who stepped up since last time, we're actually... Um, we're going to be giving away a whole army at the end of the year, Monty. Uh, Good job. Dragon Roos, and then I'll be painting right. the shield maidens to give away. And so um, at the end of this month, yeah, January, February, March, um, the winner of that will be announced. So basically next episode. So it's not too late to get into the uh, Saga Thursday Patreon. Get your chance to win that stuff. And then you'll actually, um, the next level we're shooting for is an additional two episodes a month so if we just get three or four folks signed up we could have a battle report and a faction review every month uh which would be pretty amazing um you're gonna be busy rog i'll be busy i'm I'm at this time i've committed to do it so uh yeah let's see let's see if we can hit it if we get some more folks to sign up we've had a couple more each time we do one of these, so if we just keep it going, uh, maybe we won't have to wait till May to see the the next battle report. So, um, yeah, uh, one last little mini topic here. Moving on to the uh, Discord, I made some uh, improvements here. Some updates yep. to the Discord. So. Yep. Uh, one thing is there's going to be quite a few folks on here now. Um, there's almost 500. It's like three wow. in the 470s, 480s. Okay. Um, one thing I wanted to point out was we added a find players uh, tab here. So if you haven't yet, I would recommend popping on. And basically, you just come here to say where you are as specific or not specific as you want to be and uh, you can see if there's players near you um so i actually money i found another player in wisconsin i didn't know about um <laughs> perfect so we within like a week of this being posted here so i've made a new contact myself and uh so that's pretty cool um, that's awesome had a little trade trade by sell section here so uh, i love it on over. i love it uh, to facilitate the rumor mongering, I've added the Age of Alexander uh, subsection here, and you can take a look at those picks on there, the Battle of the Elephants, and um, what else? Uh, just a scenario chat, campaign chat, and then I added, so the Raj Rules website, for people that visit it, you know, it's just hosted for free by a buddy, and uh, tends to go down if anyone visits it actually to pull a document so <laughs> i've uploaded everything on there all the scenarios to the the discord here um and everybody else is welcome to post whatever scenarios they have to this section here so it'll just be a s- section that's just scenario files essentially and um 
know, anybody can come here and find new scenarios to play. Um, same thing with tourney packets. Um, you know, if you're running an event, post your tourney packet here. So those new TOs can copy what you did, uh, mm -hmm. save them some trouble. And then I've got uh, other stuff. I've got the old feud cards, the challengers, the tale of challenge cards uploaded our back of the book campaign docs on here too so um yeah a lot of new stuff on the discord server so um there's no reason not to pop on over say hello join the fun uh yeah okay yeah, i i belong to quite a few discord servers and i like the organization layout and the content of yours best oh okay very nicely done oh thank you well, I like that mine. I'm in several as well, and they all have pictures instead of the words for what the server actually is. So I'm like, yeah. I can't remember which one's which. But Saga Thursday says Saga Thursday right on the cover. <laughs> right. That does help a lot. Okay. Monty? Um, yes. We haven't talked about games for a while, so... We have not. Why don't we uh, dig into a recent game we played? Uh, I've been going on for a while here, so why don't you tell us <laughs> who painted these uh, beautiful models first, and Ooh. then uh, the games here. So we're looking at an elephant right. and some some cataphract hearth guards right. look like right. Sassanids. So, exactly, Sassanid Persians. Um, we've played a couple proxy games, and Scott brought out his painted warband, and I think he had. Eight or nine points. I mean, he is a machine. He's been kind of whittling away on these in the background, and he starts dropping them on the table. And I lean forward, and I start looking at them. I'm like, holy Hannah, dude. Wow. I mean, uh, he's a great painter, and he does lots of detail, and he clicked it up to a whole nother level. So first of all, before we even got the game going, I think we talked about the figures. Um, he was leaning heavily on... Aventine's Sassanids. Okay. I do think he had some gripping beast, maybe archers or something in there, but it was mostly Aventine. They, and they are spectacular figures. Um, and um, we just like, anyway, so so first of all, I admired his army. That distracted me for a while. And then I wanted to try something different. So I proxied my Mutt uh, Moors Vorban, which has a lot of mounted, as Saracens. And um, never ran Saracens before, but I oh, noticed cool. like Andy, yeah, Andy Lyons run them, and one or two other uh, players had run them, and I thought, okay, I need to, I need to see this for myself. I look at the board, and I'm like, eh. And then I'm like, well, Andy ran them at the Grand Melee, so what am I missing? So, anyways, that was it. We uh, we pushed this through um, the um, uh, oh my gosh, we just mentioned it, the uh, Tale of Challenges. And in my typical mm -hmm. fashion, I decided to try to be cautious and only issue two challenges. And Scott went with three with first blood. So I kind of conceded he'd have first blood. That's fine. He has a shooty warband. And he opened up with um, his assassin shooting stuff. And after a while, I realized no one is safe with the assassin shooting. Ooh. If you're in hardcover, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, if you're, you know, it doesn't matter where you are. Or what you're doing, they're going to hunt you down. And with two beautiful board plays on here, uh, there are uh, Armand's Curse, which uh, gives gives me, the defender, in a shooting attack, a minus one to my defensive dice. So Ooh. now I'm saving on, you know, fives and sixes generally. And then if he uses a rare, I get no benefit from cover. So all of a sudden, Ooh. that rocky ground, right? That rocky ground, all that benefit goes down the tubes. And then he would, he would pair it with uh, Shadow in the East, which takes his levy archers to nine dice, and he gets a plus one on his attack dice. So he was <laughs> literally, he was literally shooting my levy archers in rocky, in you know hardcover rocky ground. He's just shooting them right out of there. By the end of the game, I think I had like two or three left. And and look out, like if any other unit not in hardcover like gets lined up for these shots, um, you know hearth guard whatever it is, he's going to just drop them right off the table. So, yeah, wow, that was brutal. So that was fun to see, like both fun to see, brutal. But then he also broke out. It was all coming together for him. Um, I was kind of nervous about his composite bow on his uh, left flank 
and he had his hearth guard and his elephant with his warlord kind of concentrated on the right. Mm-hmm. And we each had castled up our levy in the middle, so I kind of concentrated my hearth guard against his hearth guard. So right away, he pushes his hearth guard forward with a double move, and he plays the inexorable advance, which um, on a hearth guard unit with a rare lets him roll two dice for each of my units that are with an S of the chosen units. And for every roll uh, with the elephant, uh, it was with an elephant, it meant equal to my armor. So that's fives and sixes. Let's make sure I want to make it this right. Yeah, equal to higher. Yeah, that's kind of a. Oh, to my lengthy. shooting. So my. That's worse. So I had mounted heart guard. So four, five, or six. He was dropping my heart guard left to right. And there's no saving throw. They're just dead. Just Casualty. Oh. So I was like, woo. I may not have picked the best warband nor the best build for this. I am really taking a little bit of a beat down. There was a late game rally where I did manage to uh, get a, um, a unit of heart guard on one of his units of heart guard. I wiped his out to a man. I lost nothing. That at least brought our like our our points close. Mm-hmm. And then the elephant was just giving me fits, giving me Good. fits because he kept he kept the elephant out of range of my archers. My composite bow was dead. And I'm like, so I'm going to do now what? I'm going to fight an elephant with my mounted heart guard? That's a terrible matchup, <laughs> right? So I was like, he's, he's sniping me from the back of the elephant. He's bullying me. He's doing an inexorable advance and killing me. And mm-hmm. I'm just like, oh, dude, just where's the finish line to this one? I need to just like, let's get to turn six and we'll total it up. Wow. And, and it, it, was, it was fun. It was beautiful to look at. It was fun. Um, and I really got beat up and bullied, and I, I learned a lot about the Sassanids. And I, I also have to say, I know it was only one run out. <sighs> I did not love the Saracens, and maybe my build my build could have been better. But, uh, boy, I would have. I was like, if I had the Mutts, I could at least make a game of it. Mm-hmm. But uh, that's my own bias because I like the Mutts so much. So maybe I need to give the Saracens another, another run out against someone other than Sassanids. Sure. They, uh, I think I ran them on Tabletop Simulator uh, at one point. I think there, there's some fun stuff on there. They are the composite bow warriors, right? Yep, yep. Um, so that's always the challenge, figuring out how to get those composite bows yes. to meet your satisfaction. Yep. Um. So, okay, cool. So the elephant, he lived throughout the game? Oh, boy. So if I could just sneak in one other yeah. thing, I, I didn't realize it until the game was well underway. He has, or the assassins have second wind and for a common or uncommon, and get this, it's during your orders phase or orders reaction phase, you can remove a fatigue from a friendly elephant or unit without range weapons. So I'd, I'd get the elephant, he'd get a little beat up, he'd get two fatigues, then his you know, orders reaction comes. Whoop, off comes the fatigue. He can do it in his now, turn. He can do it yeah. mine. He rests it. Whoop, now I have, I'm, and it's a resilience too. So it's like, good grief. I mean, what, what am I, I need to kill it in one turn. And with all my mounted heart guard, that just wasn't going to happen. Yeah, that's a good point. If you just a little cautious, keep it back. You mm-hmm. know, usually the horses are the strike force, but uh, they don't like, they don't like that <laughs> elephant. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> It was good. Uh, and, it was fun. Yeah, especially taking auto hits back when you're sending Ooh, Hearthguard in. Horrible. Yeah. Horrible. Not a good, not a and good And minus train. one to my attack dice, so it's like it couldn't be worse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you have to do a double move, going with the fatigue, you can't even hit him. He's doing <laughs> autos back. Oh, good. Oh, I'm looking forward to seeing these at uh, Depticon. Oh, yeah. Should be, should be fun. Um. All right. Uh, I played a game as well. I've been playing a few games with the Norse scales, Ani. Nice. So this is wow. Wow. with my heathens painted currently, which I have uh, actually quite a few models on the paint bench right now. I'll probably talk about next time. Uh, I can do Vikings or I can... Do Nor scales where I use all my levy figures as levy, javelin yep. levy. Now always a good pick for the gales, yes. Yes. and I use the rest of them as hearth guard. So yeah, you know, I say that they're, they're warriors for my Vikings, but um, yeah, you know, I just have four units of four hearth guard for the Nor scales, and uh, I played 
against um, Zach. He was running Anglo Danes. He's getting ready. Okay. He's going to be my battle report opponent. So he's going to get some Anglo Dane blood flowing in his veins again. And um, yeah, the Norse scales are a lot of fun. This is like a noob crushing army, Monty. I don't know if you've. I don't think I can play it anymore because I played at Fimble Winter in the pickup game. And then I played another pickup game previously. And the combats are so brutal uh, where you just throw in the hearth guard. I, if I'm playing a newbie, I almost need to change my play style because you, you can overactivate the unit of hearth guard, throw everything in there, unlaunch extreme devastation with. Uh, the auto hits and taking your armor up to six and then playing. Um, I think it's called determination, the ability where you yep, can't be charged. <laughs> so um, now that I think against a, a, a veteran player, it would be, I would have a lot uh, trickier challenge on my hands because uh, kind of what's happening is I keep slinging out one unit and uh, I find that the rest of my battle line is kind of sitting there. Um, just waiting, and there's no activation efficiency at all on the board. It's all melee abilities, and like you need to trigger two or three of them to like get get the bang for your buck. And yeah, like a couple of them, you wouldn't even necessarily even trigger if you could only do one or two. You know, it would change your whole plan. Nope. So, um, but. Yeah, they are they are a lot of fun to play though. I will they say. are. Uh, we played Tale of Challenges, or not Tale of Challenges. Uh, my version of a big talk, um, and so that was the play test of it, and it worked pretty well. I guess the only thing we clarified during the game was that for big talk, you can't um, issue a challenge for something that's already happened. So. Um, I just added that to the scenario. So, for example, if um, nobody chooses first blood on the first turn and somebody kills the other person, so you know who, who got first blood, you, yep, yep. it's already happened. You can't claim it. Um, or, you know, if, if you kill their warlord, you can't then choose the kill the warlord <laughs> challenge on the following turn. You know, they yep. have to. Uh, okay. happened beforehand um, except for the ones that are at the end of the game because those score at the end of the game uh, but you know the other ones are a little more timely so uh, didn't go well for old Zachy boy but um, he'll get a chance for revenge uh, against these guys as the Vikings for, for the battle report um, so yeah looking forward to it and I've got some armored hearth guard I'm adding to the force on the paint desk right now. So we'll nice. see those before next time. And uh, yeah, it's good. Got to get some historical saga in. Right. Can can I ask, mm -hmm. Raj, so your your build has two points of javelin levy? Yeah, I use two points of javelin levy in a two units of seven and one unit of ten. Got so it. the unit of ten would go in the middle. Yep. and um try to get a volley or two off and with that shooting ability you can max it out to 10 i think easily with two dice maybe yep, yep. um but the other ones were good as well you know they still shoot with four dice and um you know they still generate saga dice they hunker down in the woods they uh take fatigues for the warlord uh can't complain about that yeah. And um I will say that the next faction review is gonna be Norse Gales, mm -hmm. which was recorded previously. And so these games are after that recording and kind of got me pumped up. <laughs> um yeah, we'll we'll see for Adepticon if uh there's a chance I might just take run Norse Gales for one or two of the days. So um okay. I'm running Age of Magic. On Thursday, Friday, yep. I'm in the big boy building playing Infinity. On Saturday, I'm the ringer, essentially, for that day. So if it's odd, I'll get to play, like, as a player. Yep. 
but if it's even already, then I'll I'll yeah. sit out. Um, yeah. And then Sunday I will um, sign up to play like everybody else. Nice. So as far as Adepticon painting, kind of, I, I was planning on Pagan Peoples, but it's got to be, you know, 16, 17 archers, models mm -hmm. for Cav, and, um, a, you know, a Cav Warlord, maybe even like heavy weapon hearth guard, like if I wanted to do it. So, and that would just be for Saturday and I might not get to yeah. play anyways. So I might just, that would be brutal. Might just say, well, I don't know if I want to paint up all that. If I'm not going to use it for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, like maybe I'll just run them as Norse Gales, <laughs> call it good. Take, see if I can get through three melee opponents in three yeah. rounds. If if you get three melee opponents, you can do it. And mm -hmm. I think yeah. it was 2016, the Norse scale in version one, um, which looks a lot like version two, a little bit different. Well, what's it? I think it was version. Ah, darn it! It's been a while, but the Norse scale have ended up in the winner's uh, top spot in the U.S. Grand Melee. So, so they have potential. Yeah, I think they definitely do the right matchups. Um, mm -hmm. We don't know what the scenarios are going to be, but they're guys on foot. You know, they can they can handle the scenarios. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that's might be what I'll do. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Oh, good luck. Okay. Uh, finally, we get to our main topic yep. of the day. So, uh, Monty, you're going to take the lead on this one. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I had a couple thoughts, Raj, and, and I know we didn't really um, get together on this because sometimes we like to do hot takes and also <laughs> see if the other guy like gets stuck. Yeah, that's what I like to do to you. I like to sling it at you. So, but, but I want to pitch it this way, if, if this works for you. Um, there, are different, there are different people, like as I was thinking about the universe of people who are trying to uh, grow a saga club, you could have someone who's starting from zero. And I, I thought maybe it was important to differentiate from someone who's starting from zero and then someone who uh, has a few people and is trying to grow the group. Mm -hmm. would, would that kind of would that kind of work to kind of break it out along those lines? Yeah, I think so. And it was always when we we're doing the getting started with Saga in 2022 video, you know, I was kind of flip flop back and forth. You know, who's the audience here? You know, because it, it is very oh. different starting from zero versus. Yeah, I play a bunch of mini games. You know, let's play Saga. Right. Um, so, yeah, I agree. I agree with your, your approach well, and, on this. And I can I can burn through like the zero like my my big my big take on this one really not anything shocking but like um in this world if there is someone you know like it, there's no reason to invent the wheel or invent a club if there's already a club somewhere within driving distance from you and so that was my thought like if you're starting from zero and you're like I want to play Saga what do I do I think your first approach again it's your call right. You could grow your own club, but your first approach is maybe to take a look and see if there's a saga group in your area. And as ridiculous as this, as this seems, Raj, right, that, that you're in big metropolitan areas or even a rural area or the state of Wisconsin, as you point, uh, pointed out, you look around and also you're like, oh, I didn't know so-and-so played saga. And for me, recently, you and I talked, and after Fimble Winter, it turns out there's a whole subgroup uh, of like 10-plus uh, players playing saga in the southern part of the cities that I had no idea. I don't know that they even knew about us up here. So it's like, so it's like, how do you pull these things together? So step one, you're a new player. Um, take a look and see if you could find an existing saga group. And I'm going to tell you what, I know people like, it's always when you're going to meet new people, there's always like, you're a little nervous and like, you know, um, you know, how will this turn out? Hey, I'm telling you, as someone in a saga group, we're always looking for new players and we're mm -hmm. always welcoming. We're always excited to bring new people on. So um, when you go look around, you're like, well, where do I look? Um, my first thought is like your local gaming store, like a space where people meet up and play. You can talk to the owner or employee and just say, hey, do people come down here and play saga? And you know what? That person behind the counter will know because they walk around 
they talk to us, uh, they, they know what's going on in the gaming space, so they'd be a good place. I'd, I'd also pitch, like part of the way, Raj, I, I got in touch with those other Saga players in our area, was I realized they play at a local gaming store, and once I figured that out, I found my way to the Discord channel for that gaming store. And a lot of stores nowadays are doing this. They're setting up their own channel. So it's it, it's, it takes a little bit of work, but um, you might take a look and see if your gaming store has its own Discord channel. And when you get in there, you could take a look, and the channel might even say Saga Group, and then boom, there you go, you found them. Um, I'd also pitch this one, Raj, and I'm no, f- oh, I have to be careful, I'm no fan of Facebook, but uh, Facebook does do a good job of organizing hobby stuff. And we have uh, local group pages for all different rule sets, all different um, games, and there is one dedicated to Saga for our local area. So um, you might go into Facebook, and, and if you don't want them to have your stuff, you can kind of set up a dummy account. And mm-hmm. still get in there and still post and find people and set up games. Um, and then I would say one other option that occurred to me um, was that you're, you're new, you're looking around. We know this from past experience, but uh, look for and see if you can pop in and attend Saga events at any conventions that you might travel to. So, for example, I know we have people that come to Adepticon to play in the Grand Melee. And the way they got onto the Saga train was they were out to play some something else, you know, Warhammer 40K. And they walked into the Saga room, they looked at this game, they talked to the people, and they thought, geez, I want to do that. So that's that's one more way. So that's that's me kind of ripping off really quickly um, how a person who is new might find their way to an existing Saga group in their area. Yeah, I, I think that was all uh, good suggestions there. So a uh, couple things to add. So um, head to the Saga Thursday Discord, the Find Players section. That's going to be the latest place now. But uh, otherwise, um, like you said, the Saga Facebook groups. Um, so there's a really big one, and I know there's like a kind of a second big one for Saga. So join that group and then do a search for your country or your state, because at some point in the last couple of years somebody is probably there's been po hey, is anybody in wisconsin play is it, or your mm-hmm. neighboring state is anybody in minnesota play saga or you know is anybody in chicago so you can bring those people up and i've done that and messaged every person who has ever been in wisconsin and said anything about saga you know whether they liked it or not I'm like hey you play you know and uh, start discussions with those folks um, that's a really good point about the Discord servers, and um, yeah, I'm actually part of like a Madison uh, group store because of Infinity. There's like Infinity Talk on that store's Discord site, so um, I definitely uh, agree with that. And um, yeah, get out to the events if you can. Always good to find like-minded people, get you excited, mm-hmm. and then. At those events, take photos and bring them back to your area and post them on your store page or, you know, um, try to get people excited. Yes. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I've been doing lately is you know, I took the Fimble Winter pictures and posted them. We have like a city Facebook group posted them on there and. You know, people that I hadn't interacted with or, oh, I didn't know we had Saga around here. I was like, well, I don't know how you miss my 25 other posts <laughs> about the models I'm painting. But, yeah, you know, we got people. And, you know, it was thing, too. You know, these people came up from Illinois and uh, Minnesota. They came over. You know, there must be something about this game that has got people interested in. And, um, yeah, the other thing, if you to uh if you'd want to kind of grow it from scratch i don't know if this was a separate topic for you or part of the same thing but and we kind of touched on it last time um so i played a game this past weekend with a guy who hadn't played saga for a long time but he plays a ton of other games and you know he agreed to play saga with me and then you know and after the game we were chit-chatting and now i'm going to demo some other miniature game for hip not for him, but you know, I'm interested in it because yes. you know we're talking and it 
it goes yeah. it goes both ways i think with saga you know if you want people to be interested in your stuff you got to be interested in other other people's things you know other people's stuff it's a two-way street you know we can play more than one game there's nothing wrong with that you know you can have fun a lot of different ways but to have an open mind and you know there's somebody who probably just wants to play nothing but saga all the time out there but yeah that's you find some like-minded people more power to you but it's kind of not how the world works um 100 percent agree roger if i can just kind of jump on that point there as a matter of fact i have been plugging saga to some of my bolt action friends and some of my bolt action friends have been like counterpoint we've we've been uh showing bolt action to some of the saga players so they're good players you just want to come up and meet in that common space and as a matter of fact i'm doing um two demo games in march uh one of them next sunday and get this raj the guy's coming in with two feet i had a foundry hun hun army um a lot of models all horses mm -hmm. this guy loves uh horses in bolt action she was like you have a hun army i'll take that and paint that that'll be my first war band i'm like Oof, okay wow, that's, that's, that's great that's going in with two feet so so uh i i will both show them the game and then sell them my my uh my uh funds so mm -hmm. that's awesome yeah. yeah i guess um just to keep it going you know when you're doing your pickup games yeah kind of been guilty of this is especially in the covid times uh yeah. doing it in the basement you know you're safe safe there you know but nobody nobody's gonna see you play <laughs> and uh, ask you about it so i did go down to the hobby shop this last weekend to play that fellow we played age of magic and i was just using a hodgepodge of stuff he was using a hodgepodge of stuff and there was guys playing Warhammer 40k Crisis Protocol. One of them came over and started asking questions. Oh, you can use anything you want. And, you know, he had stuff from his old defunct games. And um, so I think Age of Magic is something that really needs to be considered. And it's partly one of the reasons All Fathers is an Age of Magic event is it's the best way to get... Um, new players from existing games over because most of the popular uh miniature games out there are fantasy sci-fi now you found the right spot with the bolt action people money for the historical side but in our area there's not a lot of that going on there's a lot of fantasy players and being able to hey let's, let's give your models a shot you know are you tired yep. of the the uh rigmarole the roller coaster of the games workshop rules um you know these never change baby that's <laughs> I don't right know if you want to say that uh, some people <laughs> might not like that but um you know being able to use models i mean the other thing too there's like people buy into all kinds of miniature games and um you know a lot of miniature games go defunct and so but you can still play them with saga and um so just being open to age of magic i think is important <laughs> for uh, growing your local community agree 100 percent. cool um what else did you have on your little notepad there monty right so um it this one maybe depends a little bit on your local scene but i have um a couple times and and admittedly admittedly these have not been the best times they're they're a little tough to grow mm -hmm. um you know in in this COVID era but i have uh partnered with a local gaming store and they have a policy that like if you want to do a demo or a game day and as long as you make it open to all and that you're going to help the people who walk up and stuff they will feature it on their website so um it gets on the marquee it gets on the website and it's just a you know you put it out there and you just see who comes in um it's a it's a little tricky because you know you're hoping someone will notice it hope someone will come in a few people came in and and i walked them through the game but uh you know these kind of demos in the public space in, in addition to playing in a public space you mm -hmm. know you can sometimes work with your store to um you know to try to set up a more formal event and try to get people in yeah i think i think that's a great idea um we had a demo day back 
this was before Delta variant where everybody was vaccinated and woohoo. Yep. We're, we're, we're done, good. baby. Yeah, Let's get back done. out there. That was the, the one and only. And that was awesome. We had the local guys showing it. Yeah, it was just demo day, learning day. Come on down. People yep. were asking about it. Yeah. You just gotta be visible in whatever way you can. Just yeah. Try to yes. get out of the basement, man. <laughs> exactly. So, Raj, let me put just a little twist on it. Mm -hmm. So you've got a you've got a group, but of course you're competing in this public space because there's a lot of fun games out there. I mean, there are a lot of fun games. If I was, you know, if I didn't have to work, I'd be playing all the games, but I can't, right? Yeah. So what do you what do you do to kind of like help your group shine? Maybe Maybe just kind of raise it up just a little bit, stand up from the crowd. What are the kind of things that you can do to, um, you know, to grow your group, to, you know, get you to the front of the pack amongst all these other gaming groups? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know if you know the answer or think, well, you think you know what I'm going to say, but I, I, I think yeah, maybe. you got to, I think definitely putting the hobby foot forward really helps. So, um, I can paint the models very prettily. It's an yes. ability that I have. And um, I think that helps a lot in getting attention when I'm at the shop. And then I, I do the same thing with terrain, actually. Um, I painted, I built these haystacks for Fimble Winter money. You wouldn't believe awesome. how much attention these haystacks are getting here. I need to build a haystack army or a display board or something. <laughs> People, uh, so, you know, extensive terrain too. And so when we played, I brought in uh, my three by four battle mat. I had the neoprene uh, terrain mats. I had the terrain toppers. Everything was done to a high standard. Um, now I was playing Age of Magic. This was kind of like a proxy for us, so I kind of failed in that regard. But uh, everything else looked nice, and people did like those haystacks. Um, so just uh, doing your best to showcase your models to the best of your ability, I think, has helped. Taking photos, that's one thing. Um, I'm trying to just take more photos and post them. I'm not despite having a channel and stuff like that. I don't post a lot of some random stuff on social media, but um, I'm trying to take pictures of my games and post them on our local community page just to show, hey, you know, we're, we're out there. We're playing it. Um, yeah. So like I said, you know, that one guy saw the tournament photos and commented. Um, yeah, but he didn't see the other ones. So just keep, you know, do as many as you can. You know, somebody will see something at some point and uh, exactly. you might have a new new player on the line nice is that yeah, what you were you that. were thinking well it, it is it's one of the approaches and and i want to like i want to touch on this so i okay i'm gonna i'm gonna pledge to be a little better on this i have at times and then i kind of forget just in as a matter of convenience i have the neoprene mat beautiful i have the neoprene saga terrain set from uh is it playmats eu playmat EU, yep right and and they're beautiful um but to lift them up just a little farther i like the idea of dropping in some 3d into the 2d mm -hmm. world so yeah. that you can move around based on like you need to go in there we can exactly that over we've got some rocks or rocky ground or um you know whatever it is like you said um some uh haystacks i have this stuff i need to Put that in my traveling box to just like click it up one more notch so good suggestion yeah cool yeah um yeah the if you don't have the 3d toppers um some people will talk disparagingly of the because i think the war machine hordes community pioneered <laughs> that approach and uh there's a negative connotation with that so having the toppers uh looks good i'm actually um i ordered a very large number of those to support my upcoming events and i will be doing a video review of those uh in oh, the future awesome. and i'll be showing off my terrain toppers as well so Love it. can look forward to that sometime soon um yeah yeah using that those the neoprene some topper it all fits in a very 
mm-hmm. reasonable bid. Um, yes. So, good deal. Uh, well, I like what you've said so far. Any anything else? Um, I'm going to sneak in. I'm going to sneak in just a couple other mm-hmm. things yeah. that can be pretty we'll quick. Because uh, yeah, right, right. So um, I I know I look around and I've seen this in other gaming systems. I think we could do it in Saga. I know I've heard people talk about it. Um, escalation leagues, like especially if you're starting with like Ooh. very green, very new players. Yeah. Maybe you start with four point, and then you say, hey, if you paint something, blah blah blah, we'll go to five. Then six is like the goal. Uh, but to help like grow them from step one, escalation league might be helpful. And maybe your group is past that point. So then I would say um, one thing that really brings the players out, like for regular games and in better numbers than your average game days, is if you, someone has to take this on, but if someone in your group can take on the responsibility of kind of leading a campaign, people love the narrative, they love the color, they love going into Facebook and the little group and posting up challenges and after action reports. There's just a little something about game A leads to game B with some results following mm-hmm. you and then like calling it done at some point. So campaigns are fun. Um, I would also sneak in. Um, we waffle on this one, but we try to have some regular saga game days. Like, like maybe it doesn't match your schedule. I know we can't match everyone's schedule, but if you mm-hmm. have a reoccurring, like, we have Saga Sundays, you know, it's at this place, it's at this time. If you can make it out, we're going to be down there. And, um, you know, regular game days, I think, can help a little bit. And and back to your point um, on this one, your events, like, really show the hobby off. And, and like, they're so much fun, like, people are traveling from out of state for them. So, like, mm-hmm. how better to showcase the game of Saga than to get to meet up with like-minded people, Um, you know, travel a little bit for it and like talk tactics and builds and see everyone's painting and just kind of bring the community together. So I think, I think those, those events that you're hosting are a superb idea. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I think they're definitely a good idea. Definitely part of my, I don't know, I don't say I have an overall strategy or master plan (laughs) to grow Saga, but, um, I like running events. I like meeting saga players hanging out playing the game and you know that's what i can do to facilitate that now you talked about escalations i think those are a great idea now you mentioned that it might not be good if your group is established but um it is i think they can be a good idea especially with each new book that comes out where Uh you can all be all right this is it we're all this is the age of invasion escalation everybody pick a invasion war band let's do it or you know you know we didn't get into hannibal well this is the time boys this is the hannibal escalation we're getting ready for alexander um you know and uh if you can spin that into a campaign as well i like that it doesn't take a lot you can literally just call it a campaign but like do you know there's like no mechanics or underlying yeah. structure you know yeah, you yeah. just play the games and um if you're the the master or whatever just concoct some story based off what happens you know the games who who are the kings who are the dregs and uh you know kind of string it together somehow i think that could be fun um what i do like the the way that saga books come out i think each one of those is another chance to kind of reinvigorate everybody um, through some kind of group event like that, I think. So, all right. Well, you've had good, good stuff here, buddy. And uh, I was worried we kind of repeat ourselves from that, that prior video, but this is, this is a lot of good stuff. I mean, it's treading some of the same ground, but um I'm liking, I'm liking what I'm hearing. I'm getting kind of pumped here. Got some ideas myself. Hopefully you got a couple. I was, you got anything else in the holster there, in your quiver? Uh, I think that's it. I um, I kind of want to do a, a little saga poll in our, in our local era, area. N- now that the numbers have come down and we're moving, it seems like we're finally, I mean, cross our yeah. fingers, moving yeah. forward a little yeah. bit, right? Uh, I, I kind of want to, Get it a little like 
let people give me some feedback on where they want to go with this local group and uh and uh you know let's just keep doing demos um maybe maybe work up a, an event um try to figure out how i could be in the event and also run it and play i just the, the guys in the uk tell me that we're silly that we have events where we're not allowed to play and i'm like well wait a minute are you serious you guys manage to play get back to your laptop punch in the numbers get the table assignments, throw them out, and then run over to your table. I mean, but they say they do it, and they think, and, and I give them credit. They're like, it's silly that you don't play it. I'm like, hmm, maybe it is silly. <laughs> yeah, as long as you uh, post all the events ahead of time, there's no surprises. Uh, you have adequate yeah. time between rounds. I don't really see any issue in it. You know, um, If you do want to have surprises or you know, nobody knows the scenarios ahead of time, then it's it's like, yeah, well, you knew what it, it was. You yeah, cheeky yeah. Mega. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's fine. I think if you're crunched for time, um, kind of like Adepticon is, probably not a good idea. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm down for that. I'm looking forward to playing at um, uh, All Fathers. And then Zach, Zach is the TO, but he's also the ringer. So. I, you know, so he, if it is odd, he's going to get to play too. So then we won't, we won't have a, have one. So that's kind of how we did it at, uh, Fimble Winter. It was looking like I was going to get to play, um, the day before we had 11 plus me. And then a guy got sick overnight. Um, actually the, my buddy who drove up, who was staying at my house, um, had bodily, projections overnight had to leave <laughs> and a long drive home to boot oh, oh, no. uh, so then it was then it was even uh, at that point so i didn't get to play but um yeah good times good times <laughs> all right well thank you money you're the one who uh thought this topic up and yeah I think we had some good discussion here. If you have your own thoughts or ideas or want a clarification on some points, comment below. Uh, we're getting close to the end of it here, Monty. Mm -hmm. We do have some thank yous out there. Terry, Patrick, Sean, and Mitchell. These are the big dogs stepping up on the Patreon. Nice. But you can look on the list here. We've got plenty of others. I think five, six, ten. I think it's at least 20. Um, good number of folks who have uh, joined the Patreon. And my my big thanks. Monty, thanks you. We're getting another army <laughs> off his shelves. Um, I don't think we said what it was. It's going to be Pagan, Pagan Roos army, right? Yep. Pagan Roos. Okay, yeah. They're fun. So if you would like to win a Pagan Roos army, uh, become a patron. Um, at the end of this month, we'll have a drawing for a uh, gripping beast box and some painted shield maidens. So that'll be exciting stuff. And if we get just a few more signed up, we can get a battle report every month. That'd be cool. Nice. But otherwise in two weeks, what date is that? The 17th, I think, mm -hmm. uh, will be the Norse Gales. Video. This was recorded with Patrick Weaver. He's a friend of Mike Mahalis from North Carolina. And uh, it's a really good video. It's what got me excited to play Norse Scales. And uh, if you want to hear about the punishment, you can dish out to noobs, uh, hopefully some veterans. It's a, it's a good video to listen to or watch. And uh, the one after that is probably going to be a post-Adepticon discussion. Monty, that's the way the dates work out. Yep. Right. And I'm going to try to take some uh, video recordings and chats at Adepticon. So that's probably going to be the video for April, mid-April. Nice. So that's what our schedule is looking like currently. Um, if we get a few more patrons, we'll move some of that up. But um, that's what it's looking like for now. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Comment below if you have some thoughts on anything here. 
We had the shotgun blast of <laughs> eight different topics at the beginning and uh, how to grow a saga community at the end. Uh, Monty, any closing thoughts for you here? Yeah, I, I'm just real quick. I, I'm always curious to hear what works for other people, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, again, why reinvent the wheel if someone tries something? I, I suddenly remembered someone saying in the, in the UK that they played Saga in a library, and Ooh, and that was okay. Yeah. Maybe they themed it on some sort of historical event, and and that's kind of an interesting approach. I mean, really, that's talk about playing in the public. Wow, but uh, yeah, stuff like that just amazes me. Yeah, there's actually that's not a bad idea. I mean, the libraries have rooms. They want people in those usually they're empty <laughs> from what i can tell my visits to the library and they have websites and they post stuff um and that sounds like something if if you can handle it and advertise it as such you could have a lot of kids there so yeah, you could um, you could you know, so just maybe you yeah, right. want that or maybe you wouldn't but nope. um the other thing is uh churches have good spots we went to a cub scout banquet and i was like damn this would be a great venue here uh lots of room nice and clean open space uh food on site they're gonna talk to these people here see if they want to hold uh thimble winter 2023 20, here <laughs> try not to use too much pagan i know uh, the, all the, the symbolism <laughs> uh, so hey okay, there's a couple of closing thoughts for you uh, thanks again, Monty. It's been a blast. I'll yes. talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Saga! If you'd like to see more Saga content, consider joining the Heathen Army over on Patreon or popping on down to the Saga Thursday Discord server. Links below. Thanks, guys.